If you're trying to get into PC gaming for as little as 10 bucks, then can this old architecture named X58 still play games in 2022? Well, the answer to that is overwhelmingly yes, but there are a few drawbacks. Where in today's video, we are testing out the top five games that are played on Steam and then pairing that with an RTX 3050 to see if this old but gold architecture can give you a smooth gaming experience. Though there is more than meets the eye with this architecture. So let's get into it. Are you tired of seeing this annoying activate Windows message? Then if so, today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as $14 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get activated today. Works for Windows 11 Pro too. Links in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and the first game that we're going to pull up here for you guys is Elden Ring. This is a newly released game in 2022, and it also is played by nearly a million concurrent players on Steam, at least when I checked and did the benchmarks. And what we see here is that the game does have a 60 FPS cap limit. Now you can get around that limit with some mods, but for the purposes of this benchmark today, I decided to keep it vanilla. And here's where we tested 1080p high settings. And what we saw here with Elden Ring was that we're getting an absolutely smooth experience at 1080p at 60 average FPS. And then you'll notice on the graph that we've done two different separate results here. And basically we've got this whole configuration here, the X5690 CPU and the X58 motherboard, three sticks of four gigabytes of memory, which makes it 12 gigabytes of DDR3 in total. More on that later. And we see here that that gives 59 FPS with a 49 and 22, one and 0.1% low. So basically in Elden Ring, if you get this older X58 architecture, even couple it with a newer GPU like the RTX 3050, you're gonna get a smooth experience at 1080p high settings, even though the minimum recommended requirements for this game state that you need a lot newer of a CPU. So I guess the folks over at Bandai may wish to update their minimum requirements because X58 is still more than perfectly capable of playing this game. The next popular title is CSGO, and here's where the X58 architecture does an absolutely fine job, whether it's overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz, or whether it's just on the default out of the box settings, we're getting 128 average FPS at high settings with the RTX 3050, just normally, and then overclocked, we're getting over 162 average FPS. This was done on DE Dust 2, so it's a multiplayer map, and the 0.1% lows were a bit stuttery. This is one thing you may notice about this particular benchmark, and that's mainly to do with uh, shifting around with certain events. Say, for instance, once you finish the round, I noticed that it would be like a quick frame spike. So I believe these 1%, 0.1% lows in this particular benchmark aren't really indicative of how smooth the game can be, where I actually had a fine experience in any of the clutch situations. I didn't notice any real problems playing this game. So in terms of this X58 architecture, it's two for two. And let's move over to Apex Legends, a game that is extremely well optimized for PC. Here on both scenarios, you can see that the FPS is coming really close. 81 overclocked versus 78, 1% and 0.1% lows, absolutely fine. Again, this is 1080p high settings. So if you wanna drop the settings down on the graphics card, you can get even more average FPS with this particular setup. But for all intents and purposes, I decided to test on high settings in the games that we're showing here today. And then we move over to Dota 2, 134 average FPS overclocked versus 104. And this is where we saw one of the biggest differences between overclocked and out of the box settings. And that's mainly because we're not just overclocking the CPU with X58, we're also overclocking the DDR3 memory, which is kind of crucial to get the best FPS possible especially in 2022. Though the last game we're pulling up for you guys is Ark Survival Evolved. And this game right here was scored 82 average FPS versus 63 with the default setting. So overclocking just like Dota 2 on Ark Survival Evolved can make a massive difference. Though on Elden Ring and Apex Legends, it didn't make such a big difference. The one thing that I can see from these results is that as time goes by with PC gaming, games are getting much better optimized, which means that the older hardware becomes even more relevant as time goes on. We can see with Apex Legends, there wasn't much of a difference, but it was still maxing out an RTX 3050 
absolutely fine. Elden Ring was smooth experience both default and overclocked, but then CSGO, Dota 2, and Ark did respond very well to overclocking, meaning that they're more single thread dependent than they are multi-thread dependent on Apex Legends and Elden Ring. So with those results out of the way, what we can see with X58, if you're looking to play some of the most popular multiplayer titles, this architecture can still give you an absolutely fine experience in 2022. And in fact, the CPUs are so cheap. If you're looking even on AliExpress and you wanna get it shipped worldwide, you can get the CPUs for nearly $10 USD. That's six cores, 12 threads, and they usually work absolutely fine because a lot of the Xeon CPUs were pulled out of servers, meaning that they'll run at low temperatures in very cool environments most of their life. So they generally have a lot of life left in them. The X58 motherboards themselves, I'm finding I get these actually quite a bit more now in 2022 and especially in 2021 than I did before that where they were more sought after. Now I'm finding people give these away. I actually have found quite a few X58 motherboards in dumpsters and been given them for free. And also in particular, this one here on the table, this actually got traded in for someone who was upgrading their PC to a higher spec PC. And they just said I could keep the motherboard and the CPU and the RAM. So you may have people around you or you may have particular locations where people will give this kind of stuff away. And if you see a motherboard like this one here and it's coupled with say an i7-920, then you can upgrade that CPU to something like an X5650 Xeon for extremely cheap and then extract a lot more performance out of this architecture. Though since X58 is over a decade old, there are some drawbacks to this architecture. The first of those being the power consumption, where on idle, when we're not overclocked, we get 118 watts max draw. And then if we're overclocked, we get 140 watts. And then if we're running benchmarks, that power consumption difference pretty much scales all the way to the top there in Unigine Heaven, where we saw with the RTX 3050 overclocked, 296 watts max, and then out of the box default settings, 272 watt. Though another drawback with this architecture, since it is old, is that you don't get access to not just AVX2 instruction sets, but also AVX, which can be required for certain games out there on PC. However, it is quite rare to come into one of these games, as we saw with the top five multiplayer titles that are on Steam at the moment, none of these games required either AVX or AVX2, making this an absolutely fine configuration for playing those games. However, you can run into titles that do require this and then they just won't simply boot at all. So that is a drawback. Then there's also no PCIe Gen 3. This is actually Gen 2, even though the results here today with an RTX 3050 were absolutely fine, coupled with the fact that a lot of these boards won't carry USB 3 or actually true SATA 3 either. So there are some speed limitations with X58, but when all said and done, it does a fine job of gaming. Though the final thing to talk about and to look out for with X58 is of course, again, related to that age where if the motherboard has just simply been used heavily, then it may not have much life left in it. And that also goes for the CPU and the DDR3 memory too. The one easy way to check is to just look at the general overall condition of the motherboard, see if there's things like rust or perhaps bulging capacitors, which would indicate that it doesn't have much life left. And then also if there's heavy oxidization, AKA rust on the metal, that could mean that the thing may not work properly either. Anyway guys, with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video on X58 and the cheap Xeon CPUs. Even in 2022, you can still get a good gaming experience. And especially if you wanna put in a bit of time and overclock, you can extract a lot of performance out of this architecture. If you come into this and you're looking on a tutorial on how to overclock, then I've got one that I can link and put the link for up here for you. And that will just get you going in terms of getting a basic like we did here today, 4.2 gigahertz overclock, which is relatively easy if you've got a decent cooler. Though also I look forward to giving you guys more content with X58, where some of you have emailed me and asked me to check out the numbers that Linus Tech Tips actually got in a video where he tested it with an RTX 3060 Ti. So if you guys wanna see that, do let us know in the comments section below. Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day, which comes from UJ. And they ask, listing, untested GTX 1060, untested GPU. I do not have the hardware to test this, no refunds. Check seller's other listings. 
literally sells PCs for a living and can't test one GPU. Now, even though UJ is making a bit of a joke, this is actually a really good thing and a really good hint to look out for if you're looking for a graphics card or any PC part for that matter, and the person selling it saying it's untested, and then you go to their profile and you can see that they're selling quite a few PCs, so they know what they're doing with the hardware, it's very easy for them to check if that part works or not, and then they're selling it untested because perhaps they know it's broken. So this is one of those things that, yes, definitely look out for that. When I buy my untested hardware, for instance, I always know the seller that's selling it and whether it's genuinely untested or not, as opposed to someone who, especially my, for instance, I got a lot of broken hardware here, but I just sell that broken. I wouldn't sell that untested because I know it doesn't work. But unfortunately in the land of PC gaming, there is quite a few scams that can pop up from time to time. And this is one of those things to be careful of. So great question of the day there from UJ. And without a side, if you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell. And also if you wanna become a member behind the scenes, which I'll start ramping up some of the vlogs again very soon. I just got pretty sick in the last month. So the content has been a bit slower than it otherwise would. But if you wanna join for as little as a dollar a month and support the channel, then I'll put the link in the description below to become a Tech Yes member. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. Yeah.